Okay, let's go to verse 7. Rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. He says, let your roots grow and be built up in Jesus. In Jesus. A lot of people build their roots in what? What we've been teaching, what the, what the book's been talking about. The traditions of men. That's where it's been. The Lord is saying, hey, no. Build your roots, roots in this, the Bible. You know, you have people, they read all kind of books and don't read this. They'll read all kind of books about this book. There's a lot of books out there that talk on what this means, what is the Bible. We, just read it, they want yeah, I mean, the Lord, we all have the same Holy Spirit. Y'all have the same Holy Spirit I have. I don't have a better Holy Spirit than y'all, and that's why I'm a teacher. Uh-uh. I, we got all got the same Holy Spirit. I just, I'm teaching because the Lord has given me the time to do it. And plus, He's put it on me. He's given me the heart to want to do it. So that's why I do it. That has nothing to do with me being better than y'all, more spiritual than y'all. That has, y'all, y'all hear me? Has nothing to do with that. So we all need to grow in the Word of God. Now, there's only been maybe twice that I've suggested another book other than this to re- for y'all to read. And one of them had to, has to do with this, what we're, what we're learning tonight. Churches are, are less and less being run by the Holy Spirit. I mean, all you have to do is go to them. But remember this. I'm not saying do not go to church. Because there are pastors out there who are filled with the Spirit and they're preaching the Word of God. They're hard to find, but they are out there. So if you got a church where you're falling asleep, maybe the man's not preaching in the Spirit. And that's why your spirit's not getting excited. You, maybe some of us need to pray, Lord, is this a dead church? Is this, is this pastor? Is this who you want me to be under? Especially men. I'm especially talking to men on this. Because men, you're the head of the house. You need to make sure you and your family is going to a spirit-filled church. And when I say spirit-filled, I'm not talking about everybody running around jumping up and down. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a preacher who's preaching in the spirit. And if they have teachers there, teachers who preach in the spirit. Teach in the spirit. That's, it's got to be in the spirit. It's got to be from God. We have a lot of churches that are not being operated by God anymore. Second Peter 3.18 says, But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Grow in His knowledge, in the knowledge of our Lord. Praise God, He gave His eyesight. There's a lot of people out there who are blind. Have you thanked them for it? Have you thanked them because you can hear? Because there's a lot of people out there who can't hear. Are you taking all this stuff for granted? If we take it, if we quit taking it for granted, we would be thanking Him always. Lord, thank you, thank you that I can hear. Thank you that I can see. Thank you that I can speak. Thank you, I have both my arms, both my legs. Because everybody's not born that way. So we need to praise Him continually for, for things we just take for granted. And we take a lot of stuff for granted. Verse 8. Be aware lest any man spoil you with, through philosophy and vain deceit, after the, the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Could the Lord put it any clearer right here? I mean, this is, this is the Word of God. I mean, He can't put it any clearer right here. The Bible plainly says, it says, the Scriptures are not up for private interpretation. Well, with all these religions we have, you think they're taking private interpretations? Mm-mm, they're doing their own, own interpretation. Well, this is what I think. No, no. This book was written by one God. Not by different gods. Well, this God, He meant it this way. But no, this God meant it that no this was written by the Holy Spirit. So it only means one thing. When people say, well, that's your opinion. No. If, I, if I'm giving you the Word of God, and I can back it up with the verses above it, and I can back it up with the verses below it, and I can take verse over here or verse over here and show you how it connects together, this is not my opinion. This is the Word of God. But people, if they don't want to believe whatever you're saying, that's, that's their main excuse is, well, that's your opinion. When they don't want to believe something, that's what they say. But that's what you think. No, that's what the Bible says. I, how many, I mean, I'm teaching you verse by verse by verse, right? So it's be pretty hard for me to take something out of context if I'm going verse by verse by verse. And a lot of my teachings are that way, right? I go verse by verse by verse. 
I, when the Lord says, I'm accountable for what I teach y'all, I take that very serious. God said that to me. God, not a man. God said to me, I'm, you're accountable for whatever you say to those, those people, whoever you have. You're accountable for it. So I take that very serious. I take that as serious as when God said, I'm the head of this house. It's the same way the men ought to be. You better take that very serious. God has put you there. The Lord has put you in that position. And you better take it serious. In Romans chapter 1, verses 21 and 22. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified Him, not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Now these are these are just lost people. These are, you know, they, in their own wisdom they became fools. In their own wisdom, the Lord says they became fools. Did you know that there is no such thing as a Christian philosopher? There's no such thing. What is a philosopher? But a philosopher is, is it's almost it's almost like a scientist. A scientist they go on theories. Their whole thing is based on theories. On what, what this man said, you know, well, that's the same thing here. You can't be a Christian and be uh, a philosopher right here. Have your own philosophy of things. You know, well, I think, you know, remember, don't go by what any man thinks. As soon as a man tells me I think, and he's talking about the word, I'm not listening. Because I really don't want to hear what you think. I mean, I can give my opinions too, but I know they ain't worth a flip. So there, there's Christian philosophers. They don't have them. They're men who are church. They're searching for the truth. They're still searching for the truth. That's what men. Those. That's what they do. They're, they search for the truth. What do we have right here? We have the truth. We're not searching it. It's here. We have it. We just need to read it because it's here. They have vain deceptions. They don't know. They don't even know what the truth is. They really don't. They just follow what men before them said. That's all they do. Like I said, they're based on theories of what men said long ago. And that's, that's scientists and that's these people here. The same thing. It's a tra tradition they have. Just like churches. We, you know, well, we, that's what we've been believing in this church. Well, maybe the church has been wrong all that time. When you go to church... Make sure the man is preaching the word of God. If he says anything that's contrary to what's been that what the Bible says, leave the church. Leave the church. And I'm gonna get more on that. Believe me, I'm gonna get more on that. Paul is saying to be very careful that you don't get caught up in these deceptions. It's very easy to get caught up in them. Very easily. These men are very wise, worldly wise. But to us, they sound wise. They really do. Just like I said earlier, there's men out there, man, they, you can look at them and listen to them and like, man, he's really intelligent, you know. If what he says doesn't go with the Word of God, right then and there, you need, you need to know his wisdom is not coming from the Lord. This is going on in the church. Verse 9, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. It's hard for me to see this verse because what it's saying is, that Jesus is the fullness of God, which Jesus is in us. Right? Right? Yeah. And in Him, talking about Jesus, draw the fullness of the Godhead. The Godhead is, is God, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's the fullness of the Godhead. And if that draws in Him, then that means it draws in us also. Maybe that's why the Lord said, we're the light of the world. Not the light, but a light. We're a light in the world. Because God, all God does is glow. That's all He does. He has no darkness. He's a continuous glow. Amen? Amen. And if we got Him in us, I'm not going to say we're going to continuously glow, but we should glow a lot. If you're walking with the Lord, like I said before, people seem to, seem to think, oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm going to sin. Well, like I said, you, you, we can go days and might even be weeks without sinning. We can do that. We're not going to be sinless, but we can go for days or even weeks without sinning. Verse 10, And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Paul is saying, 
Because in verse 9, because with verse 9, he says, we are com- He has made us complete. We are com- when you have Jesus Christ in you, now some places in the Bible says perfect. Well, that word perfect means complete because we know we're not perfect. But when we have Jesus Christ, you're completed. You are completed. Because before we weren't complete because we were dead. But now we have Jesus, now we have life. So now we're complete. I mean, what's better than life? Now there's people who are, who are dead that walk around. But there's people who have a life and they walk around. So we went from dead to life. Where do you go from life? That's it, your life. I mean, you got life now. So this is what I'm saying is, is uh, we're complete because we we, we, we've made it. We've got life in us now. A lot of people don't realize we, there are a lot of dead zombies out there. A lot. Oh, they're walking around talking and drinking and acting, you know, like human beings. But they're zombies. They are zombies because they're dead. The Bible said, plainly says we are dead until we accept Jesus Christ. When we accept Him, then we have life. But until then, we don't even have life. We're dead. Oh, man. I love reading the Word of God. He tells me a lot of good things. And it says right here in verse 10, also it says that Jesus is the head of all leaders, rulers, anyone in authority. Anyone in authority, Jesus is is the head of them. So our God, our Jesus, is boss. Right? He's boss. And who and and this boss who's over anybody out president, kings, I don't care what they are, sheiks, I don't care what they are. Our God is over them. And who's this God that's over all of them? Let's make it personal. He's our father. <laughs> He's our father. <laughs> we gotta look at things spiritually. Spiritually we have to look at things. Verse eleven. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by circumcision of Christ. And in Acts, it speaks about the Jews that were in the, that were in the wilderness, and how they worship other gods. And he says to them, now this is what God said to the, to the Jews when they left uh, Egypt. When Moses, when Moses got them out of Egypt and they were in the wilderness for 40 years and they started worshiping other gods in Acts 7.51 this is what the Lord called them he said ye stiff necked and uncircumcised in your, in your heart and ears ye do always resist, resist the Holy Ghost as your father did so do ye stiff neck is what he called them uncircumcised now we know the Jews at babies, the male babies, they circumcise them on the eighth day, something like that. And a lot of Jews thought that made them right with the Lord. And the Lord says, no. The way you get circumcised now is here, in the heart. That's what he's saying. Oh, it's a big thing. Big thing. But they're going to find out that's not what, what makes them right with God. Romans chapter 2, verses 28 and 29. I'm going to read this out of the Living Bible. So you have, it's a so we can understand a little better. For you are not real Jews just because you were born of Jewish parents or because you have gone through the Jewish initiation. initiation. I was going to say it, but you just jumped in front of me. (laughs) Ceremonies of circumcision. Okay, the Lord's saying, you're not real Jews just because you do all this? This is what he's saying. He says, no. He says, a real Jew, a real Jew is anyone whose heart is right with God. For God is looking for those who cut their bodies in actual body circumcision. But he is looking for those with changed hearts and minds. Whoever has that kind of change in their in his life will get his praise from God, not from you. Paul is saying that we need to Put off the old body of sin. Just like it says in Ephesians 4.22, that you put off concerning the former conversation of the old man, which is corrupt according to deceitfulness, lust. So Ephesians 4.22 says we need to put our old way of living, we need to cut it off. Verse 12, Buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who had raised him from the dead. 
Colossians 2 verse 12 says this says the same thing but I think you can understand it a little better he's, what he's saying in, in Colossians 2 12 is the same thing he's saying here for you were buried with Christ when you were baptized and with him you were raised to a new life because you trusted the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead well like I said a while ago uh, there's a difference when you come up out of the water you're a new that's all that's doing you're just showing that you're drowning your sins you're drowning the old you and when you come up out of the water and coming up and living for the Lord now because religious people go by traditions and they will follow the traditions of men and they will accept philosophies of men because they sound very intelligent instead of studying the word of God and seeing what the real truth is and people might think you know, that's kind of hard. You're saying you're going to separate Christians from religious people. Well, religious people are Christians. No, they're not. Today, religion means nothing. Oh, I'm a religious person. Well, that don't tell me nothing. Tell me I live for the Lord. Say I'm a born-again Christian and I live for the Lord. Then, okay, now I'm, and I'm, I'm listen. In Galatians 3.26, For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. So those Church of Christ who believe you have to be water baptized to make it to heaven. Right here, Galatians 3.26 says, For ye are all children of God by faith. Did it say by water baptism? No, it just said by faith. Now if we had to be water baptized, then it would, be, it would say right here. It would say by faith and water baptism. But it doesn't say that, does it? I wonder what book they're reading. <laughs> Well, they might be reading the same book, but they're skipping some verses. A lot of verses. <laughs> <laughs> but baptism, I'm sorry, but the Church of Christ, I'm not saying that's not a church of God, Those that religion. you know, I'm not saying they're not a church, but they are adding to the Word of God. They are adding to the Word of God because you do not have to get water baptized to make it to heaven. Verse 13. And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. You were being dead. Remember what I said at the beginning? How we're dead without the Lord? Ephesians 2, 5 says that even though we were dead, they, before I even go further than that, before I even go in, read another word, I'm going to say that again. Ephesians 2, 5. It says that even though we were dead, can you, can you take it that you were dead, that we were dead, all of us in here were dead because of our sins. He gave us life when He raised Christ from the dead. Our hearts haven't been circumcised yet, true circumcision, until our hearts are given to the Lord. He has made us alive with Him because now we have forgiveness of sins. Until you become a born-again Christian, I don't care how many times you ask the Lord to forgive you. He does not hear you. Lord, forgive me. Well, if you're not born again, He's not going to forgive that. you got to have the Holy Spirit. Who is the, uh, the mediator between us and God? Spirit. The Spirit. And if you're not born again, do you have the Spirit? No. So how are you going to speak to the Lord? You don't have that interpreter. You don't have the mediator. So you got people who are praying all the time, asking for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. If they're not born again... Lord don't hear him. He said he has made us alive and he has forgiven us our, of our sins. Knowing that our sins have been forgiven, listen to me. Knowing that our sins have been forgiven, I should hear yelling. I'm sorry, but when I'm reading this, I'm like, ah, you know. But do you hear? Your sins have been forgiven. The Lord forgives us of our sins. The Lord does. He forgives us. And don't raise hands or don't show, say anything. But, you know, how many times does the Lord have to forgive us? And I say yes. How many times has the Lord have, have to forgive us? Some of us, maybe it's every day. Some of us, maybe it's every other day. Or once a week. Or once a month. But, you do have sin. We do have sin. And the Lord says, I forgive you. If it's coming from here. You know, we don't ask for the same forgiveness... You do the same thing over and over and over 
But Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. Well, he knows that's not coming from the heart. All right? But when it's coming from the heart, praise God, he's going to forgive you. He forgives us. Not only will he forgive, but he says, I'm going to forget about it. So if you bring it up to me tomorrow and ask me for the same forgiveness what you did, what you just asked for forgiveness of, I'm going to say, what are you talking about? Because he says he forgets it. We can't forget it, but we got to put it in our head. Okay, the Lord's already forgiven me for this because it came from here. Remember, it has to come from the heart. There's a lot of people out there asking for forgiveness and it's not come from the heart. Psalms 32, 1. Blessed is he whose transgressions is forgiven, whose sin is is covered. Or maybe y'all didn't hear me. <laughs> Blessed is he whose sins are forgiven, whose sin is covered. It's covered. The Lord doesn't see it anymore. It's covered. He's taken care of it. That's what he's done for us. Because we are sinners. We are sinners. All of us. And if you just sin once a week or once a month, and this other brother or sister, they sin every day, does that make us better than them? No. We're still sinners. We're sinners. We're in the category as sinners. Period. Doesn't mean how many times you sin. We're sinners. Alright? And the Lord forgives us. And He covers that sin. Hebrews 8.12 For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Boy, I am glad. <laughs> I'm glad. Because their sins... I don't want to remember no more. And I still remember him, but praise God he doesn't. Praise God that he has forgiven me and he's forgotten that sin. I, I don't have the ability to do that, but I do have the ability to believe him that he says he's forgotten it. So I don't let the devil throw it back up at me and try to bring me down with it. You hear me? Because he'll do that. How are you going to praise God when this is what you did yesterday? You know? He'll remind you. I guarantee you, He will remind you. Verse 14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinance that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross, to His cross. What He's saying is He wiped out, He erased the sins we had committed. Mm, I'm, every time I get to this, uh, because of our sins, because of our sins, he had to be nailed to the cross. But because of that, we have life now. But just remember, when we do sin, just kind of kind of think about it if you can. You know, this is the sin that, that, that Jesus was suffered, tortured, and died on the cross. So I could have forgiveness of this sin. Because of Ephesians, I think it's chapter 5 or Six, but anyway, Ephesians. The book of Ephesians says we do not fight against flesh and blood. We fight against a spirit world. So if we're fighting against a spirit world. Then what do we need to do? We need to see things spiritually. You hear me? We need to see things spiritually and quit looking with these eyes and look with our spiritual eyes, because we're not fighting against flesh and blood. We're fighting against a spirit world, and the only way we can see the spirit world is by being in the spirit. And you can't be in the Spirit by looking with these eyes. You understand what I'm saying? 2 Corinthians 5.21 For He hath made Him to be sin for us. God hath made Him to be sin for us. We're talking about Jesus. For God hath made Him, Jesus, to be sin for us who knew no sin. Jesus had no sin. That we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Everything that the Lord has done for us, everything he, he did for us, and everything He's doing for us now, how can you turn your back on Him? How can you say, well, thank you, Lord, but I'm going to do things my way? How can you do that? Right here He's plainly said, He had no sin. He had none. He knew no sin. But He took on sin. He took on the sin of the world. And when He did that, God had to look away because God can't look on sin. God had to look away from His Son because <clears throat> He took on our sins, our, your sin, our sins. He took on Himself. This is your Jesus. 
This is what Jesus has done for you. And the more I, I, I look at that, the more I concentrate on it. And I remind myself of that all the time. Because I keep reminding myself because that keeps me close to him. Remembering what he did for me. And I say for me because the Bible says if there was only one lost sheep... He would have done the same thing for that one lost sheep. So he made it very personal. So what he's saying, if you were the only sinner on earth, I would have done the same thing. So even though Jesus was tortured, nailed to the cross, the hardest thing he took was his, is when his father turned away. Out of everything, that was the hardest thing for him to take. That his father had to turn his eyes away from him. So can we live for a man like that? Should we give our heart to a man who's done that for us? To the point where for a while, just for a little while, he is away from his father. I get a very emotional emotional when I because I can I can I can picture it in me and I, I I don't know, for some reason I can feel it. You know. We have so much. We have so much to be thankful for on what Jesus did for us. We have so much. It gets me that some Christians, and I'm talking about Christians, born again Christians, that are out there just, the Bible says we should hate sin because it's against my father. That's why I hate sin. I hate sin. Only because the Lord says, I'll forgive you. I forgive you. Because if I ask for forgiveness, you will believe it's coming from the heart. Because I don't play the game, well, I'm, a, you know, I'm asked for forgiveness, but I'm not really going to stop or whatever it may be. We should take sin very serious and we should, we should live to please our Father. And it doesn't please Him that we sin. I'd rather please my God, who just did all the things I just told you. I'd rather please Him than to satisfy the devil.